The first labor union in the United States for cobblers and leather workers dates all the way back to 1794. Centuries later, workers are still fighting for what they believe is their fair share. And one man is leading the charge. Robert Costa catches up with UAW leader Sean Fain. Earlier this month, President Joe Biden paid a visit to the critical battleground state of Michigan. He came to Detroit, Motor City, to court union voters. You know what the hell is going to happen if this man's not president because we've seen what happened. Labor went backwards. Biden had just won the United Auto Workers endorsement. And he was eager to share the spotlight with UAW President Sean Fain. You all are the ones that brung me to the dance. And I never left you. I never left you. So, Mr. President, Sean Fain tells me that he wants to ramp up his fight, not just with auto companies, but with corporate leaders nationwide over unions and workers' rights. Are you with him? Absolutely, positively. Look, I don't have anything against corporations. You just got to start paying their fair share. And the idea we have a thousand billionaires paying an average of 8.2 percent in federal tax. Come on, man. Wall Street didn't build the country. The middle class built the country. Last September, Biden was the first sitting president to walk a union picket line, showing his support for the unprecedented six-week walkout at all of the big three car makers. General Motors reached a tentative agreement. And the UAW went on to win historic contracts for 150,000 of its members, making Sean Fain the standard bearer for the labor movement's comeback in 2023. This is what happens when workers get power. When the workers got this union back, they were able to elect their top leadership for the first time in history. Then we saw massive change in a short amount of time, and we're going to continue to do that. They elected you. You've shaken up the place. Well, that's what they elected me for. Fain was the first UAW president elected directly by membership. Unions! And within months, he led shutdowns on assembly lines at Ford, GM, and Chrysler Jeep parent company Stellantis. That's why we keep filing the offers in their proper filing cabinet back here, and we'll just keep filling that thing up until they want to get serious. He broke with tradition by broadcasting updates via Facebook to union members and the world at large. All three companies wanted concessions on profit sharing. And we said, hell no. Why bring people into the process when usually these negotiations happen behind closed doors? It was important to us to be you know, open and transparent with the membership, not just in bargaining, but just in everything we're doing. The union's new contracts not only make up for pay cuts workers took more than 15 years ago during the Great Recession, they provide a foothold for the union in Detroit's electric vehicle future. Ford CEO Jim Farley recently warned the contracts will have, quote, a business impact on the automaker. Fain says impact is what he's all about. I remember my grandfather talking about the 110-day strike at Chrysler back in 1950 to get pensions. A native of Kokomo, Indiana, the 55-year-old came up the ranks as an electrician and still carries his grandfather's union pay stub in his pocket. If you would ask me when I was in high school, are you going to be an electrician one day? I would have laughed and been like, are you kidding me? I went on unemployment a few times and dealt with that system. When my first daughter was born, we were getting WIC. We were getting formula and diapers. It was a humbling experience. But experiences like that, they laid a groundwork for me for what was important in life and why things mattered and, and why you know wages mattered, why having good jobs mattered, why having good benefits mattered. From Hollywood actors and writers to hotel and hospital workers, even neighborhood baristas, last year's labor protests were like a dam bursting. From 2021 to 2023, the big three automakers took in over $100 billion in profits, while average auto worker pay has fallen nearly 20% from pre-recession levels. What gave us power at the bargaining table was the companies saw how eager members were to go out on strike. And when we were calling plants to go out on strike, the plants that didn't get called were disappointed. It was just a matter of when and how long it was going to take because I knew our members had the resolve to make it happen. This was our generation's defining moment. If unions don't run the kind of campaigns that force employers to come to the table and bargain with them because the cost of not bargaining with them is greater than the cost of bargaining with them, they aren't going to be able to build their power and organize more workers. Workers aren't stupid. They know that the companies weren't going to give them that bump. Kate Broffenbrenner is a professor at Cornell University's School of Industrial and Labor Relations. She notes the American public sided overwhelmingly with striking auto workers. 
They had given huge concessions in 2007. Now the companies were making money and they weren't sharing it. They had risked their lives during COVID. And so he did a very good job of getting the public to see those issues. This was about something that was fair and this was just, and that we're living in a time where corporations are taking too much. Do you think some of these corporate leaders misunderstand you? You're mild-mannered, you're professional, you have glasses on, nice guy, but you also rail against the billionaire class and you wear t-shirts at times that say, eat the rich. I don't think billionaires should exist. No one needs that much money. I think it's inhumane. Pick any city, walk around, you know, you see people starving, people without basic necessities. There's no excuse for that. And it's not because people are lazy or don't want to work. The billionaires that keep amassing more and more wealth so they can build rocket ships and do whatever the hell they want to do, that does nothing for humanity. Your critics say that's class warfare. <laughs> yeah, yeah, class warfare has been going on in this country for the last 40 years. The billionaire class has been taking everything and leaving the working class with nothing. So and you so, welcome it. You want so the war. It's always, whenever working class people ever step up and say, this is wrong, we want it to stop, all of a sudden, oh, it's class warfare, it's the end of the world. If there is a labor war being waged in America, the front lines are here. Is it right for Chattanooga to In the non-union factories of the Midwest and South. Without a union. No. Volkswagen's plant in Chattanooga, Tennessee, builds their latest electric cars, and it's a top target of UAW organizers. When the company uses fear, we're gonna come back with facts. And these are the facts. You know, Volkswagen made $78 billion since 2020 in profit. They paid out $24 billion in dividends to corporate executives and shareholders. The CEO of Volkswagen makes $12 million a year. The UAW has tried twice before in the past decade to organize here. What's changed since then? After the UAW's recent victories, non-union automakers, including Honda, Toyota, Hyundai, and VW, offered raises too. I respect what you're doing, man. Oh, thanks, man. But the extra pay came without the union's benefits or job protections. You just had the strike with the big three. Why not take it down a notch? Why come into this tough territory in the South? Oh, there's no, no we don't ever rest. I mean, that's, uh, uh, workers deserve justice. He wouldn't take the letter. We were there in December when workers tried to petition management for a meeting with organizers. Volkswagen tells Sunday morning they respect workers' democratic right to determine who should represent their interests. The unions. But Volkswagen worker Sean Lawler says skepticism of the UAW runs deep in the community. How does your family see unions? They don't. They don't see it as, as a good good opportunity. They see layoffs. What do they call unions? <laughs> they call them communists. They call them communists. communists? Yes. Volkswagen works the same way all over the world. Still, it's after the UAW's success last year, 13-year Volkswagen employee Vicki Holloway says the union's time has come. I really think we have a chance this time, unless your eyes are just closed and your ears and you just don't hear anything, then you, you realize that we do need a union. The UAW now says a union vote in Chattanooga is approaching. It will be another defining moment for Sean Fain and for the American labor movement. You know, organized labor led the way for the American dream. And that's fallen by the wayside over the last 40 years. And it's our, it is our obligation to humanity to change that. You're not going to give up on that? Not at all. That's, that's, that's the mission.